Okay, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to March First Friday webinar. My name is Ariana. I'm the Education Specialist with ISPE and I'm today's moderator. Our topic this month is Illinois Bridge Load Ratings and Ash to Air. Forgive me if I mispronounced that. Um, our presenters are Peter Pasqua and Satya Mendloy from Willett Hoffman and Associates. Peter and Satya, thank you for being with us today. I just have a few announcements before we get started. Yes, our quiz and handouts webpage is down. I know most of you noticed that. Um, actually, I think as of a few minutes ago, it's back up and working. So hopefully you should be able to access it now. But we also have the handouts available for download on the handouts section of your toolbar. And I've pasted that Google Forms link in the chat box so you can click on that now and access the quiz. I recommend clicking on both of those now just in case there is some finicky issues with our website again. Um, but like I said, hopefully that web page is up and running and thanks you guys for your patience. Uh, so if you have a question for our presenters at any time during the presentation, you can type it in the questions box and they will go ahead and read those out loud and answer them as they go. I believe that's all I have, so I'll hand things over to Peter and Satyam. All right, thank you, Ariana, and thank you to ISP. Um, this is Peter Pasqua, and I'll do, first part will be me talking about the bridge load rating, and then I, uh, Satyam will talk about Ashtar. But thank you all for attending today. Um, if you did see the objectives today, we'll be talking about IDOT circular letters and how they relate to what the main part of the talk is about is ash to wear bridge rating in Illinois. I will focus about um, how the how the IDOT circular letters mandate these requirements in Illinois, how the software kind of works as an introductory measure, and then we'll talk about once you do get these ash to wear files put together for a particular type of bridge, what IDOT themselves wants to see submitted. So what's great about these talks is there's going to be a big spectrum of people. There's some might be a PEs in attendance, some SEs. Um, there might be some some local public agencies looking. So I'm going to try and give a, a little bit of an introduction um, as far as the terminology, some pre and post requisites. Today we'll be talking mainly about public bridges in public structures, meaning those that are greater than 20 foot in length. So when we talk about rating bridges or structures, it's for those type of public structures. Um, what is load rating? Um, it's not to be confused with uh, NBIS condition ratings. This is actually the, the safe load capacity of your various structures that you might have in your inventory. It's actually dealing with the mathematical calculations of whether or not your bridge can or can't handle specific permit or, or design load. So we'll be using the term load rating a lot in this, in this talk. And as far as those that aren't familiar with all the, the structural terminology and even all the IDOT forms, I think a good analogy will bring, a, bring forth as a, as a classroom of students, and we'll, we'll try to keep bringing that, that forward in, in the various examples. And then finally, um, we aren't IDOT, but we do want to talk about these IDOT circular letters. Uh, we encourage you to download and read them. We'll talk about them piece by piece and how they relate to the world of ash to wear and rating. But um, if you do get the handouts uh, after, the web, after the webinar is complete, uh, we do give all these hyperlinks down at the bottom of each slide. So um, if you have any questions, each of those circular letters do have the contact info for IDOT uh, there at the bottom. So with the world of um, with bridges and ratings, we thought, um, Sophie and I thought it would be a good analogy of, of how to compare these two. So we have a, pretend we have a classroom of students, right? You got, Jack, Jill, and Bill, and that's really what we're comparing to, to what we call your bridge inventory. So if you're a consultant or a, a local public agency, uh, we, we organize all our bridges by structure numbers. And then with any classroom, you have a curriculum, and that curriculum might change over time. Something in the 1990s might be studied different in the way of 2000. And that's kind of related to how we, we load rate our structures. ASR, which is a allowable stress rating to the newest one, which is uh, LRFR, load and resistance factor rating. Those are the types of, that Satyam will, will describe when we talked about Ashtaware. And then through our bridges, like our classrooms, you go through rigorous subjects of math and science. Well, our bridges too, we, we put those under, under rigorous loads of whether it's an HL93 load, whether it's a legal load from the state of Illinois. We, we subject our bridges to those 
those subjects. And once in a while, we got to see where we're at. So in school, you always do your your quizzes or tests. Sometimes they're midterm. Sometimes midterm. Sometimes they come out of nowhere, like a pop quiz. Um, th that's kind of related to how often you want to provide these rating frequencies. Day zero, when your bridge is open to the public, or that occasional scenario where your bridge gets impacted or hit by an underpass or something, that's kind of your pop quiz there. And in the end, what really matters uh, when you go to school is that grade, that report card. So in the end, IDOT needs to see this BBS form, this BBS 2795, and instead of an A minus or a D plus, or instead of your NBIS ratings, which rate from one to nine, uh, we're going to be dealing with rating factors. So on a, on a numeric scale, greater than one or less than one. And because things change every so often, you know, you always have to have that syllabus for your classroom. Well, uh, for the state of Illinois, that's really governed in these IDOT circular letters. So what are IDOT circular letters that relate to ash to well, they're about There are about five main main circular letters that we're going to talk about. And before I switch to that, I'm actually going to go back here, whether you do have a handout or not, because I'm going to be talking about these, these uh, terminologies for bridge inventory, ASR, LFR. I know everybody has a cell phone if you're, if you're listening to this, um, this talk. So I'd encourage you to take out your cell phone, go to the, your camera app, snap a quick photo of this page, because Safi and I will be, will be using this as a baseline. Most of you might already be familiar with BBS forms are the, the acronyms, but I just don't want anybody to be confused if I name drop BBS or rating frequency and stuff like that. So take a picture of this screen, and if not, I mean, at least keep this in mind for our analogy. So back to the circular letters. Um, there are five main, five main circular letters that related to the world of, of Ashtore. So we'll go through these uh, five pretty quickly. And again, I encourage you to download these and, and read them on your own time. But the first circular, I believe in art, was back in April of 2016. And the way that IDOT rolled out this circular letter was to, to show what was the before and the kind of the, the after of FHWA. So FHWA in 1972, they basically gave the state of Illinois the ability to assign load ratings. So remember that grade for your, your student. They could assign load ratings to any type of bridges so long as those bridges were designed a certain way. So they had to be designed by HS20 or an HS15 scenario. Now the circular letter talked about in 2011, um, there was a revision that you can assign load ratings, but now instead of just that one condition, there are five conditions. So you need to design the bridge to a specific code. You can only assign that load rating if the bridge was built to plan. It couldn't have really any significant changes like a widening or something like that. And it also had to meet your state legal loads, your statutory loads. And the big thing there that they, they add is they wanted accessible calculations. So whether those calculations are by hand or by software, they wanted mathematical proof that the rating um, actually had a paper trail. And along with that, they were giving you a, a hint that a year from that circular letter in 2017 in June, all new construction, rehab, and work that would affect how strong your bridge is, the load carrying capacity, was going to require a load reg analysis and that would need to be submitted to the department, the department being IDOT. So this was their hint back in April of 2016. And what was nice of them is they gave three additional hints in between then. So hint number one, they gave the same day as that, that calculation proof. They were going to prefer it to be a, in an ashware model. So this is just a, a splash screen of what that ashware model was to look like if you see it advertised online or whatnot. And then they gave two more similar hints uh, six months later. And then a month later, so hit number two was in early 2017. Hit number three was in February 2017. And why so many hints? Uh, they just want to prepare everyone, whether you're an LPA or anybody that owns any of these public bridges or structures greater than 20 feet, that they were hoping that you coordinate each of these into an ashware model. And then that last circular letter, when it came around, FHWA, so instead of the 1974, instead of 2011 now, that was the, the deadline. Load ratings are required for all new structures, and you had to submit them to IDOT BBS. So that same comment that they had back in April of 2016, they're, they're starting to enforce that. So if you have any new bridges that were constructed all the way to whether it changed the load capacity, you need to, to provide that information to IDOT. 
So as I said, with that classroom analogy, there's there's different curriculums that you can kind of approach a classroom. And, and with IDOT, with these AASHTWARE models, you can do it uh, several different ways. Um, older bridges, you can rate them with uh, ASR, Lobel Stress Rating, all the way to the newer method, which is LRFR, or Load and Resistor uh, Factor Rating. And primarily, these three options are, are really good if you have structural plans. But some of these bridges, they're older. You have probably the the bridges that are built in the, the early 1900s that are still pretty durable, but you might not have those structural plans. So if you don't, IDOT still has scenarios where you can provide um, empirical methods, load ratings, approximate load ratings based off of rational criteria, being the, the general strength of concrete at the time, the general span of your, your bridge, and, and so forth. If you're confused of which kind of curriculum or type that you need to, to use to rate a specific bridge. Um, IDOT has that structural services manual. It's a free download off their website. That's the curriculum right there. So you can see these tables here that if you have a bridge that was designed a certain way behind the desk, then, um, then if you're rating it behind the desk, you can use these acceptable methods. Um, it's two simple tables. You can just go to section 443 of the services manual. Um, that's where IDOT would keep track of how you, how you rate these bridges. And like I said, if you're in a classroom, you have to take a quiz once in a while. Um, that type of, of quiz depends on, um, depends on the, the type of frequency that you have. So you can either do a, a design load rating. It's, it's safe load capacity for these umbrella loads, being that HS20 or that fictitious HL93 load. Or you can, you can uh, check your bridges on their capacity for for more specific loads, um, not necessarily fictitious, but the Illinois statutory, lo statutory loads. And those would be governed by the state of Illinois. And if you're wondering what those specific trucks look like, look no further than that same resource, the IDOT Structural Services Manual, um, lists all the different type of Illinois trucks that you would have to check for your bridge. So whether you have that single span bridge in, in your backyard or that multi-span structure that has a ADT of 1,000, these are these are part of that spectrum of loads that Illinois wants you to see and wants you to, to rate and grade your bridges on accordingly. So not only do you have to take that quiz, but it depends on how often you have to take that quiz. So if you're on day zero when you open up that bridge, or day one when you open up the bridge to the public, you always have to provide that initial load rating. Um, if you are changing uh, the structure due to deterioration or whatnot, you'll also have to assess with the IDOT Bureau of Bridges um, your safe load carrying capacity of that structure. And then for that off chance that you do have an over overpass bridge, it gets impacted by, by a crane or something like that, um, you might have to do um, an immediate uh, structural damage assessment and coordinate that with, with the local agency and with IDOT themselves. So that, that really is how often you take that test or quiz. How often are you rating that bridge? And then before I hand it off to Sapium, um, many of the structural people, uh, they're familiar with, with Reza or Larza or any type of software that can rate multiple parts of your bridge, whether it's the superstructure or the substructure. Today's, today's focus is really on the superstructure. So where the, where the tire hits the road, rubber hits the road, so to speak, those are the items that we're talking about, the rating capacity of those. Um, we won't be discussing the capacity of the, of the substructure. That's not the scope of these objectives. Um, but as far as when you see Sathya, I'm talking about these rating factors. It's about the beams. It's about the deck, about the ability of those items to, to carry the, the traffic. And with that, I'm going to pass it on to Sathya and talk about um, the Ashtore. So I've discussed about the IDOT circular orders, why we need to talk about Ashtore, why the state of Illinois is wanting to implement that as part of the, the calculations. Uh, Sathya is going to talk about Ashtoware itself and what we have to, to give to IDOT. Thank you very much, Peter, for talking about the general load rating process at Illinois. And um, as you might have seen in our objective that uh, Ashtoware is the most preferred load rating software in Illinois. And um, as IDOT likes to call it, uh, Ashtoware is a software by the DOTs for the DOTs, but um, worry not, uh, we are a consultant and we use the software and using it for a long time. 
So basically what Ashtaware is, it, it load rates uh, most of the type of bridges in uh, Illinois. And what you see here is the front page of Ashtaware. And this is the bridge rating software. Now, there is one more bridge design software, but um, for the scope of this pro presentation, we are not talking about this uh, bridge design software uh, because it deals with the substructure. And as Peter mentioned earlier, that um, we'll be just focusing on superstructure. So Ashtaware bridge rating is the software we'll, talk, we'll be talking about. And um, now I just wanted to talk, talk about what kind of capabilities Ashtaware has, what kind of uh, bridges it can load rate. So <clears throat> these are the kind of bridges that Ashtaware can uh, load rate. I won't list them all. Uh, you can uh, go to their website and they have a very detailed rating brochure and uh, Read, uh, so they can load rate uh, most of the bridges in Illinois. And um, especially what I like is the ability to do a 3D FEM analysis. So suppose you have a curved beam, a steel curved beam, or a concrete or a steel multi girder curved beam bridge, Estoware can rate it. And um, as far as what it cannot rate, is like a precast three-sided structures. Means, uh, these are some of the rare limitations of Ashtoware. And, um, but I'm sure they are working on it, but as of now, they can't do some of these kind of bridges where it requires more detailed or more detailed finite element analysis. And now I just wanted to show you some of the typical bridges in Illinois that you can see on the state highways, the county highways, or even your uh, regular township routes. So uh, the left one is a pre-stressed concrete box beam bridge. And um, as you can see in the cross section, it, it looks like a box and that's why it's called a box beam bridge. And then the right one is a pre-stressed concrete I-beam bridge. And, and again, it looks like an I-beam, so that's why it's called I-beam bridge. So, um, so what's the main controlling element in, in these kind of bridges are the strands. So Ashtoware can model the pre-stressing strands for these bridges, like calculate the capacity, do the losses, you know, all, all kinds of losses and in, uh, in the strands, it can do it. But, um, but what I find neat is uh, suppose say after 30 years of life uh, of a bridge, of uh, one of these kind of bridges, if your strand gets uh, deteriorated, then um, you can just go into Ashtoware and uncheck those um, strands that you modeled 30 years ago and rerun the analysis and uh, it will give you a new rating that you submit to IDOT. And then we have uh, reinforced concrete uh, bridges. So the, the most typical are the, the right one is the most typical bridge, which, which I think is the culverts. Culverts you can see ev anywhere, everywhere. And then the left one is just a reinforced concrete slab bridge. So it's basically just a concrete slab sitting on uh, piers and abutments. So in Ashtoware, what you model for these bridges are the rebars. And um, similar to how um, Ashtoware does the pre-stressed uh, concrete bridges, in this one, suppose the, if the bridge is deteriorated, right? Like in the right one, if you, as you can see, there are some spoils in the top slab then you just model those things and you you can model the the rebars and then just uncheck the rebars in ashtoware and then um, rerun the bridge and submit the rating to i dot all right and then uh, then these are also common not not uh, as common as the concrete bridges but um, the left one is the steel rolled beam bridge so these are just the I section, which uh, I most of you all 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 of you have seen in the AISC manuals, and the right one is the you know the older build-up member, or uh, or uh, if you have the new uh, complex bridges, you use the build-up plate girders to build them. So so Ashtoware can model all the elements of this. Uh, let's say you know the shear starts or as, as you can see in the left one we have some diaphragms so astroware will model all of these and uh, i won't go into much detail for that because that's uh, like a its own lecture but uh, similar to those bridges if you have a deterioration like this 
you can model that in in Astroware and then uh, rewrite the bridge and send it to IDOT. Now we have talked about what kind of bridges or what kind of typical bridges Astroware uh, can model, but uh, what kind of codes it can follow. So these are the list of all the codes. Uh, as Peter said, uh, you know the curriculum it it changes in 1990s. Uh, uh, you might have studied something different, and uh, after 30 years now the curriculum has changed, and it's uh, it's same with the codes also that are used to design the bridges. Before. Uh, there was a uh, allowable stress rating and load factor rating and now the newer ones uh, the newer bridges are designed with the load and resistor resistance factor rating so astroware in astroware you can select all these codes or uh, any one of them and um, usually it selects the latest code and um, run the bridge and apart from this like i talked about a 3d fem analysis um, so Sometimes a student has uh, quizzes, so for a special subject. So similar to this, uh, as you can see in the left, uh, it's um, there is a big vehicle carrying a house. So if you are a local public agency and um, the owner of uh, this house or the company, moving company, contacts you, hey, um, can um, can we pass our truck uh, from your bridge? you can't just say yes or no to them you need to do a detailed calculation or analysis to say yes or no otherwise something like this can happen and uh, astroware can do that once you have the bridge model you just need to model the um, vehicle and uh, it's so uh, so the left one is a non-standard gauge vehicle and uh, it can do a detailed 3d fem analysis and issue permits uh, very neatly all right, so this is uh, how the home page of Astroware looks like. Um, I don't want you to go home and not know how Astroware looks like. Uh, means uh, this is not a very detailed pre presentation, but uh, will give you a brief overview of um, how it looks and uh, what kind of outputs it can give. So uh, when you install Astroware, uh, this is what you see right out of the box. So as Peter said, there are many students in the classroom. So you'll get these 30-some um, training bridges in Astroware. And um, Michael Baker, the company who makes Astroware, they have a very detailed uh, training um, website for this uh, Astroware. And then, oops, sorry. Yeah. They have a very detailed uh, website for Astroware. And uh, you can go ahead and... Um, for each, each kind of bridge, they have a training module as well as a sample bridge. So uh, let's say you open um, one of these bridges, or um, as, as Peter said, um, if you are talking about one of the students, you know, if he's a bad student or a good student, or if a teacher needs to describe a student, the same uh, thing if you open a bridge model or if you want to model a bridge in Ashtoware, the we need to do some general things like uh, model the material type, whether uh, the bridge has concrete material, whether it has a steel, whether it has timber, or and uh, after you model that, uh, you model the beam type. So this one is a pre-stress beam. So we, whether it has a box beam that I showed you earlier, or an I beam, or uh, it has a parapet, or railing, or curve, and and so on and so forth. You enter every information about the bridge just the substructure and then you see something like this so yeah so what's what's good about astroware is, is you model it and um, i know the interface might look old but uh, it's very capable software so uh, then you see something like this this is just a bridge cross section and uh, after that, when you run it, so you model the bridge and then you run the bridge, uh, it can give you a bunch of outputs and, uh, and very detailed out outputs. Let's say if you want to figure out if your uh, beams are flex flexing excessively, you can go into Astroware and figure out what the moment demands are. Or if you want to see if the if the if your bridge can take the the load of the just the vertical load of the vehicle. You can just check or uncheck it, the shear, and, and it, it will give you um, the shear for each and every component of the bridge. Or if you want to see the deflection, it gives you that. 
and then and then it gives you a very detailed rating so like peter said the rating is a safe load carrying capacity of a bridge and then you can check rating at every portion of the bridge so let's say if a bridge is 100 feet you can go ahead and do the calculation at zero feet one feet two feet at every one feet interval or so on so forth and in this one i have done at uh, done for 0.8 uh, feet uh, or you can choose to do it at 0.1 feet or at, the bridge will uh, run slow but um, that that's an option so why am i saying all this is suppose um, suppose your bridge uh, got hit uh, six feet from the pier and uh, you know the railings uh, the ra the railings are bent and and your beams got affected and then you are like what do i do so you can isolate uh, that portion model it in ashtoware and check check uh, whether the it is still works or not because um, if something like that this happens i dot would want to know this and uh, they would want to see a you know detailed picture report or a detailed analysis again so what's neat about this is uh, ashtoware can give you real time results for uh, real time inspections all right so now we we model the bridge and then we run the bridge and what's next so after you do all this um, there are you need to submit all this to i dot so what they require from you is uh, the first one are the structural plans so they just want to see the structural plans they don't want to see the plan and profile or the cross sections or the transportation things they want to see the structural plans and after that they want to see this uh, bbs uh, 2795 form or um, it's also called a structural load rating summary so this is like the report card for a student and then you submit the analysis file so the bridge model itself so this is uh, that's an dot xml file i just put a 3d model so so these are the three things uh, that you can find in the circular letter uh, that peter mentioned earlier that these these three things are the mandatory items that you sum that you need to submit for a load rating in illinois the structural plans the the bbs 2795 or the slrs form and then the analysis file and then there are some things that i don't really appreciate if you submit them so this is the ashtoware load rating summary and i'll talk about it more about in in the next slides so uh, we have been working with i dot for a long time and this is one of the things that uh, we have always submitted so this directly comes out of ashtoware you you don't need to do anything more than that and uh, suppose you have you have a bad bridge uh, like a i don't know 30 or 50 year old bridge so i dot um, they would really appreciate if you send them um, inspection a sketch of the of the bridge they want to see where the where the bad parts are what location they want to see uh, north south east stationing and all those things and just uh, like a proof you know if you are not lying to them so you know they want some pictures to it also means uh, they trust us but they definitely want to verify that that um, we are telling the truth or not <laughs> like um, if if you say that the fourth beam from north has a uh, massive deterioration many spalls and uh, exposed rebar or strands uh, they would like to see a picture of it uh, that uh, like in in the second picture like the fourth beam has massive deterioration so uh, these three things in the blue are optional submittals but um, they really appreciate if you submit these things and then the things that are not needed are like the cost estimate the specifications the 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 usual submitters they they don't want to see all these kind of things and then this is the submittal uh, this is the circular letter that talks about those three submitters that i was talking about you know the first one is the slrs the second one is the analysis file and then the third one is the structural plans now you might think um, i'm repeating myself but uh, you know as a hint you know if if you think i'm re repeating myself there might be a question associated to it so pay attention and then uh, that uh, 
the email in the blue that dot.brace.ratings at illinois.gov that's their email um so they'll answer all the questions related to astroware its capabilities or um, if you find any bugs in it and uh, if you are dealing with a local public agency bridge that uh, the the email in the yellow dot.localbridgeunit at illinois.gov you can send uh, the questions to them and uh, but i would encourage you to ask your local district first because uh, these things changed uh, means the dot.localbridge unit was not in the circular letter but uh, this is where they prefer the emails regarding um, related to the local bridge local public bridges so definitely contact your local district first uh, before contacting irot all right and then this is the rating summary i was talking about that i always submit to irot so uh, i know it seems uh, it seems uh, very busy but um, i'll go through it so uh, as peter was talking about there there are a bunch of students in a class so, and illinois has uh, i don't know more than 20000 bridges but um, irot doesn't want you to um, run all the vehicles um, in illinois so as you have many subjects and um, and a test uh, and a student has to take test for many subjects there are these uh, notional vehicles or you know i i like to call it virtual or as peter called it statutory vehicles you need to run all this in ashtoware and um, see what kind of results are you getting and then what kind of curriculum if the bridge um, was uh, designed uh, in 1970s or 1980s what kind of uh, curriculum you are using to rate it and then what what kind of rating factor so as as peter told uh, a student get gets grades and um, here if you subject a, a bridge to a vehicle it 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 gets a inventory rating or a or a operating rating so what that basic means is um, if if the bridge has more capacity than demand then it's um, then uh, the grade is greater than 1 and then uh, it passes so um, in very simple terms a rating factor is capacity by demand so suppose uh, if your capacity is less than the demand the number will be less than 1 and the bridge will fail so and um, we all need our bridges to be greater than 1 so so that we can all be happy all right and then uh, this is the structure load rating summary form so what this is like the report card that you um, give to idot so what you do is uh, the the previous uh, in the previous slide that the rating summary you just put that information to this form and uh, put some additional information and send it to idot so i'll just uh, go one by one so as I said, this is the report card, and uh, Jill here is a good student. So we'll go through the report card of a good student, and then we'll go through the report card of a bad student in the next slide. So starting with the student name. So what you see in the report card is the name of the student, and similar for bridges, um, we write the structure number. And then um, what I don't like to know is whether it's a new bridge or an old bridge. If it's a new bridge, then you uh, just uh, specify initial rating but uh, for this one it was a re-rating so like a little older bridge which, which was rated before and then what kind of curriculum is it asr is it lfr is it lrfr what kind of um, curriculum you used or if you don't have plans did you use the, the rating model did you have the rating model or not and then these are just some checkbox options where you check whether uh, you use design plans, whether you used field measurements, whether it has overlay, whether you had shop drawings or not. So just some basic things to check and uncheck how, what kind of uh, resources you use to rate the bridge. And then these are the subjects um, that Peter was talking about. Um, so in this case, as we were doing a LF LFR rating, it's HS20 and, and all those um, 2XL, 3XL, 4XL vehicles that Peter showed you earlier. And then the result for this one. So as you can see, the most of all the numbers are greater than one. So the bridge passes. 
and then apart from this information what i dot likes to know is um, what what kind of um, uh, whether flexure or shear what kind of force effect was controlling the rating whether it was the whether the stresses were too high so in this case the moment was governing and they also like to know at what location whether it was the interior beam whether it was the exterior beam whether it was in the middle of the span whether it was in the at 20 percent from the starting of the span so all this information you get from the bridge rating summary and then you just input it into ash to where and uh, and and when you you also give notes to a student if they do good in exam you know very good good excellent or something like that so in this case uh, you define the bridge whether it's um, old bridge whether it's a new bridge so this one was a 1980 plan so you just say a load rating per 1980 plan single span bridge this many bridges this much overlay so just to for, if a teacher has to de describe a student uh, he or she will say okay how many fingers a student has or um, you know, how tall how short or stuff like that and then i'll talk about the special inspection and uh, posting that you see in the later slide but then after that uh, you need a, a seal by the teacher. So this is uh, rated by the, it should be a Illinois SE of record. So name of the SE of record and their signature, their date and uh, organization and things like that. And then coming back to, um, coming back to a bridge, which was an old bridge. So suppose it has some deterioration or um, as Peter said from the analogy, if we talk about a bad student, so let's assume Bill here is a bad student. So, so what's different from that form to this form is uh, we need to tell the uh, principal, or in this case, I dot uh, why why Bill is a bad student. Um, so apart from what you usually say, we also say that like this was a pre-stress bridge. So we say strengths disregarded fourth and eighth and um, 12th beam due to crack or re-exposed concrete and things like that. And then uh, IDOT likes to keep an eye on these bad students. So if a, if, a, if a bridge is very bad, they'd like to keep an eye on it every three months or six months or 12 months. So this special inspection is um, when uh, I dot or a local public agency or, or a consultant goes out to inspect a bridge every so often. So you need to put all this information here. And then they also like to see the grades of the bad students. So as in this case, if you, as you can see, most of the numbers are less than one. Uh, that means uh, the bridge won't pass. So either you need to load post it or uh, rehab it or replace it or think about options what you need to do for the bridge. So what's neat about this form is um, when you paste all that information from the load rating summary, uh, this form automatically spits out the posting level. So as you can see in the underlined, it gives us for a single unit 20 ton, for three or four XL 30 ton, and for five XL 30 ton. So you put the same information here and submit all this to IDOT and then um, IDOT will actually coordinate with the local public agency and then post the bridge. So uh, this is one of, I actually took this picture. So this is one of the bridge that had uh, this kind of posting and um, we had to eventually replace the bridge. And um, that's it from my side. And uh, if you want more information about how the load rating process works, uh, definitely feel free to contact uh, me or Peter. But um, if you want to just see what the general load rating process is, uh, this is IDOT's website. And um, I think it's a very uh, good website. It has very detailed information. So this is how it looks like. And we have the link. And um, I'll give it back to Peter. All right. Thank you, Satyam. And then uh, control back here. And then again, thank you to, to ISP for allowing us to talk briefly about ash to wear and ash to wear ratings. Like I said, the, what's great about ISP, there's always a, different types of engineers on the other side of the computer screen. So whether you do have a lot of experience with 
with structural engineering or whether you're kind of delving to see how you want to deal with your bridge inventory, uh, hopefully it gave you at least a flavor of, of how to tackle those objectives. Also, thanks to the uh, Illinois Department of Transportation, their key they're key in uh, answering some of our questions about how, how this software works and what they want to see um, to get this all in their inventory. And then as far as the work cited, again, the, the two main items are the IDOT Structural Services Manual, a free download on the IDOT website, and then uh, the Ash to Wear website there um, is listed on the screen. And then before I get to the um, questions, um, Again, just to recap the objectives, I think we talked about how those circular letters, those five kind of came into play with what led into ASHTOR being the preferred calculation um, method for rating processes in Illinois. Um, we talked about those deliverables, Satyam talked about, to get that report card on file so that IDOT can keep record of our, not only are our bad bridges, but of our good bridges to those that are, are subject to our uh, public traffic and whatnot. Um, but again, to, to recap, um, Really, the big goal of IDA was to streamline all these bridges uh, through a consistent method, that consistent method being ash to wear. Um, and it's a, it's a good method because a lot of the structural engineers can easily calculate bending moment, uh, posting levels and whatnot. But this just allows IDA to have a, a streamlined way to go to any type of structure number and to achieve an, a consistent rating and to monitor that rating as uh, these bridges get older in our in our inventory. Um, one thing I would like to note too, you got your software like Reza, Larza, maybe all these different software. Um, if you do look into the, the Astro software, the Astroware software, what is nice is uh, Satun can show you a window later. If ever you have questions to us, you can email to us. But because we have a lot of intelligence in these uh, XML files, I believe, uh, for Astroware, you can put route names, you can put route stationing. So say you're a, a local public agency that has a string of bridges that would be subject to say that that posting truck or that heavy truck that you get that call the next day, it's a heavy like Suzlon um, windmill and they say, can we drive across your bridges? If you organize your ash to wear inventory correctly, you can sort your bridges by, by road. So if you wanna check and see whether that big truck is gonna pass along a string of five bridges, you have those ash to wear models together. You can isolate those models, run that bridge across those five bridges, and in, in several clicks, you can make sure that you can give them the thumbs up to, to drive across those bridges or say, hey, we got to give you an alternate route because this, this bridge has deteriorated. So there are, are advantages uh, to using that ash to wear software, which, um, again, if you have questions, let me and Satya know. Um, there's our email addresses. Uh, if you have any questions, if you are a local public agency that's interested in having your, your bridges raised, certainly send send us an email and we can give you a, a little more information on ash Tour itself. And with that, I'll put it back to Ariana. I see we have a couple questions, but Ariana, any, any closing remarks before I address some of these questions? Yeah, um, I'll go ahead and uh, just make some announcements now and then we can get to some questions. Um, if you have any last minute questions, go ahead and type them in now. Um, so basically, you know, I want to thank everyone again for their patience. Um, the handouts page is live now, so you shouldn't have an issue accessing it. But like I said, they are available on your toolbar as well. Um, and of course, just please complete the quiz by next Monday so I can get out PD8 certificates as soon as possible. And Peter and Satyam, I just want to thank you guys for a great presentation. And thanks for everyone who joined us today. I hope you have a good weekend. All right, I do you have time to answer a couple of these, you think? Yeah, absolutely, go ahead. All right, well, I've uh, got a first question here. What types of structure doesn't require a load rating? Um, Basically, it's uh, it's these uh, bridges that are, are private or less than, than 20 feet. Um, it's actually not IDOT that dictates what is a bridge or what is a structure. It's the, it's the NBIS, the National Bridge Inventory. They have to have a cutoff somewhere, and by the laws when they were first introduced long ago, the 20-foot span was the cutoff. So there was a second question about why no load ratings are required for those structures 20 feet or less. That's just the way the inventory is set up. So um, if you are concerned still about the safe load carrying capacity of your of your structure, the Ashware software can still definitely rate 
create something that's 18 foot in span or 16 foot in span. It's just that you would not need to um, to send the, those submittals to IDOT. So hopefully I answered those two questions. Got another question here. Uh, what length of structure does not require load rating? I think we, we answered that. The cutoff is, um, well, let me put it this way. If you should go to the, the NBIS website or FHWA, they define the true definition of bridges. I use this kind of catch-all of 20 feet or greater. That, that is usually assigned a, a structure number. Actually, on my first slide, Actually, slide three, if you see there's a there's a website there. Uh, the first one, IDOT has a, a, a live website. It's almost similar to Google Maps. If you are concerned whether or not it actually needs a load rating to be submitted to IDOT, you can go into this map, zoom in just onto the road or crossing. If there is a blue dot there, that means IDOT deems it a structure that meets the rules of NBIS, so it's ideally greater than 20 feet, or it has several openings that combine to be greater than 20 feet. If there is a blue dot there, that is a structure in your inventory, and yes, you would need to rate that. Uh, I got another question here. Uh, let me read this one second. For an initial load rating, has IDOT only wanted the HL93 vehicle included in the rating? I'll let Safian answer that one. Uh, no, it's uh, it's how the bridge is designed. So, so. So right now the bridges are all being designed by HL93, at least most of them. So the answer would be yes. For the bridges designed nowadays, the IDOT wants a HL93 rating for those kind of bridges. But say if you were to do this in um, back in 2000 something, when the LRFR uh, was not there, where the load and resistance factor design was not there, then uh, you design the bridge in LFR ideally. So then you can uh, submit the rating in L LFR, or let's say if IDOT allows you, or let's say if you have a timber bridge or something like that, if they allow you to design it, or, or if the code allows you to design it in ASR, then you can submit the rating in um, ASR. And uh, like like I said, if we have a slide for this one. I don't know, it was slide 20 or something, Peter, if you, you can look, go to that. Uh, it's um, yeah before this slide yeah before that yep before yep this one all right so as you can see here if the bridge was designed with allowable stress design uh, IDOT allows all three ratings so you can rate the bridge in allowable stress rating L LFR or L LRFR if the bridge was designed in uh, load factor design IDOT allows load factor rating and the latest one, load and resistance factor rating. Now, if the bridge was brand new and designed LRFD, you can only rate it LRFR. You, can, you can't go backwards. And then to add to that, I mean, specifically, yes, they do want to see the HL93, but if the question was related to why we have added these statutory loads, I believe the answer to that is even for an initial load rating, the trucks on the screen right now they are needed to be required in these yes. in these initial load ratings right. so hl93 plus the statutory um, trucks have to be on that initial load rating um i got another question here so hopefully i answered that one and again if i'm missing your question certainly email me and Satyam afterwards i got another question here how are new three-sided structures rated um, i'll take a stab at it for some of these it, it's kind of proprietary where you have the context structures or what uh, the tricky thing is that um like Satyam said, there are limitations. And because some of these are curved, some of these use um, uh, um, a combination of welded wire mesh and rebar, there isn't a preset method to add these into like a, a member library so that you can pick these off of a shelf, so to speak, and check every case because um, there's a little bit more in, in involved geometry that I would say you have to put that. So to, to rate the three sided structures, you'd have to write it by rated by hand. Again, it's just really checking the, the safe load carrying capacity over the demand, or you can use a, an alternate 3D software analysis. So one that can prove those mathematical calculations. And if you can show those mathematical calculations, those are the, the current ways to do three-sided structures. But as of right now, it, it doesn't have a preset um, 
preset method. Uh, we at Will at Hoffman, we, we can do that with uh, 3D analysis for ESA. So that is a, an alternative way to do that. Got another question. How does one enter the axle spacings and vehicle load info into Ashtaware? Well, here's the great part. These statutory loads on the screen right now, those are already in the library. So if you're modeling in the state of Illinois, you don't even have to input those. You kind of select it like a pull down window and say, I want to subject this bridge to these this library loadings. You don't have to do that. But um, say you do have that case where you have the heavy load, whether it's a, a truck wanting to go down your your main line of bridges, you can manually input that and kind of like a, I'd say it's an Excel based input. You put the, the load as a, in terms of thousands of pounds or kips, you put the spacing of those of those axles in terms of feet and inches, and you put that and then you subject the load into the Ashtaware software. So as far as how you input it, you, you got to get the accurate data for those cases if you, if you get that phone call and say you have this 50,000 pound vehicle, um, you have to get those, but yes, you can input those in manually on a case by case basis. So hopefully I answered that. You, you just input it to the to the input tables in the load diagram, yep. which I think was. I think it was a page here. So later on in this tree, we talked about the inputs, but there's a special section for inputting the, the live loads and the axles. Yep. All right, got another question. Does the software include um, typical, oh, let me scroll down some more, one second. Does the software include typical bridge members such as the pre-stressed concrete box beams or I-beams so that you can uncheck certain strands or do those designs need to be added into the software? I'll let Satya. Uh, it has a, Ashtaware actually has a very good library preloaded in it. So when you install Ashtaware, all the Ashto libraries, you know, the Ashto I beams and the Ashto box beams and the AISC beams, those definitely come into it. Now, as far as the Illinois beams, you know, the IL 27, 38, 40 or something like that, uh, if you go into that IDOT website uh, that I mentioned uh, in the third, fourth last page from there you can download the illinois library and um, import into ashtoware and then select it from there so to answer your question uh, yes it has a library and you can select it from there and uncheck or check the strands and i think that answers another question that came up about how to actually get these libraries yeah as far as when you get the software some of these aren't pre-downloaded because other other dot's are using their own statutory loads so yes for the for the illinois vehicles yeah you would you would download them right from idot's website which i think we had on the right there the those are the same tabs there you can go over to the links and then you can see the libraries uh, link there on that same page. All right, it looks like those are all the questions we've gotten today. So, um, Peter and Satyam, thank you again. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day to speak with us. And thanks again for um, everyone joining us. And if that's all, then have a good weekend. <laughs>